Welcome to Chilean Football News. This is your host, uh, Daniel Campos, and wherever you are around the world, it's great to have you once again. This is a special series um, where we are going through a bit of history, detailing and searching in the uh, you know history archives about Chilean football. So we're starting with the first little series on Elias Ricardo Figueroa Brander. Elias Figueroa is a former defender, former Chilean football player, born in Valparaíso, the port city of Chile. And Elias Figueroa left very a very, very high impression in the world game. Many would argue, who was Elias Figueroa? And especially because this broadcast is in the English language. So let's have a look quickly at who Elias Figueroa was and just why he never played in Europe. Well, first of all, Elias Figueroa was born with many deficiencies to his feet. He had trouble walking as a little boy. His doctors, um, his family doctor, warned that the uh, that the young Elias Figueroa, sorry, <clears throat> could not even walk and would have a lot of trouble even running. So he had a troubled uh, childhood where he could not play football, and it's been very very documented in the Spanish language world. Now, how do you explain that a young Elias? in the city of Quilpue and Villalemana was able to first of all play junior football and was moved up into youth football and from youth football at 17 years of age as a forward in youth football was rightly picked by by coaches and scouts to be the ideal central defender to play and make his debut with the oldest club in the continent, Santiago Wanderers. It was Elias Figueroa who made such a big impression at such a young age that Elias Figueroa had basically everything. All the potential, his height as a central defender, the strength, the tactical know-how, and the technique to become a global superstar. Of course, at 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, you're very young. You don't have all the knowledge and you're constantly learning. And now Santiago Wanderers, Elias Figueroa, left a very big impression already. Let's remember that his beginnings you know, from amateur into professional football, from Alto Florida, in Quilpue, was his learning and development, development, uh, development, sorry, stage. And so, it all, it all took uh, one contact, you know, with a coach to be given a trial and subsequently debut at Santiago Wanderers. The impression was so big that a very young Figueroa went to Viña del Mar during the 1962 World Cup that was held in the country and played um, as a sparring, yeah, no, you know, just uh, as a training, informal training match um, for Wanderers against the eventual World Cup champions Brazil. And this was Elias Figueroa at only 15 years of age. He had the monumental task at 15 to stop Didi, Garincha and Pelé. And that was amazing. That was amazing because, again, his physical, you know, strength, presence, his brilliant sharp reactions, reflexes, and his brilliant tactical and technical game was there for all to see. And not only that, 
He was very imposing. He left a huge impression with the Brazilians. Elias Figueroa, like I said, continued to develop his career as a central defender and uh, was also tempted, you know, to make the move close by to Union, Union La Calera, which he did. He got the uh, he got a loan for the one season for just the one season, and um, and that's where you know officially that's where he made his professional debut. Um, and this was in 1964, you know, on the 26th of April, where Elias Figueroa also um, at Union La Calera got the uh, nickname for the first time, you know, um, Don Elias. Now, Don Elias, if you don't speak Spanish, or if you understand little Spanish, Don is Mr. But Don Elias imposes respect. Respect for his presence. And Elias Figueroa, in 1965, returned to Santiago Wanderers. And this was basically a sort of like an apprenticeship into a graduation of sorts. Yeah? Yeah. He began and continued to cement his position at Wanderers. And, well, the club was also voted the team, you know, Santiago Wanderers, as the, the, the best side in that season, you know, season 1966, as the side with the least, the least goals conceded. In 1966... Elias Figueroa, very young Elias Figueroa, went to England to represent Chile in the FIFA World Cup of that year. And in 66, he was only 20 years of age. Then came one of the most significant moments in his career. When Peñarol of Uruguay flew to Chile, to Viña del Mar, and symbolically brought a helicopter to sign Elias Figueroa, a very young Elias Figueroa, to take him to Uruguay, to take him to what they call themselves the champion of the century. This was after, you know, the World Cup in 1966, where he played all three games in the group stages for the Chilean national team. And his move to Peñarol, you know, his six years at Peñarol in Uruguay were momentous. We're talking about football across the across the Andes where it was more ruthless than what it is today, more physical, a lot of cheating, a lot of controversial refereeing, very physical, I must repeat again. And this young man, this 20, 21-year-old defender, was, according to Uruguayans, learning to perfect his trade. That's where he learnt to become more physical and more cunning and more tricky. His goalkeeper and teammate, legendary goalkeeper Ladislao Mazurkevic, also managed, with Elias Figueroa in defence, to not concede in... 987 minutes in other words in 11 matches that's a record standing minutes for a goalkeeper in Uruguay in 1969 Peñarol won the Supercopa de Campeones Intercontinentales which is the Super Cup of Intercontinental Champions you know in a glorious glorious final over the most famous Santos team led by Pelé the great Pelé, in where the man of the match was Elias Figueroa. They were also champions of the Copa Libertadores in 1970, where Peñarol defeated Estudiantes de la Plata of Carlos Bilardo, Juan Ramón Verón, La Bruja, father of Juan Sebastián Verón, and Jorge Solari, 1-0, thus converting Himself, Elias Figueroa, as the first Chilean to lift a title of the Copa Libertadores as a player. 
amazing in 1970. A great at Peñarol, very much loved, a fan favourite, and very humble. A gentleman, a true gentleman, very appreciative of Peñarol, and he decided and also admitted over the many years in his countless interviews that it was time to move on. There were offers to go to Europe, there were offers to move to Spain, but there was no reason to move to Spain, there was no reason to move to Europe because the money was the same as playing in Brazil. This is what modern football fans need to understand. It's like in music when Elvis Presley did not need to travel around the world. Why? Because he was so famous, it was unnecessary to do concerts and tour the world. He toured all over the United States. So to play in Brazil was the ultimate stage at the time in the 70s. Club football in Brazil still is very tricky and very competitive and very tough. And it is still disregarded in the world of football, especially with the centralist you know, system of European football at a global stage. Brazilian football is where all the world stars, from South America mainly, and Argentina, begin their illustrious football careers. And Elias Figueroa made his move from Peñarol, who were going through some financial difficulties and Elias Figueroa had to juggle between Internacional de Porto Alegre or Real Madrid and at the end of 1971 Mr. Lujo Don Elias was his nickname in Chile in his home country in Uruguay it was Mr. Lujo Mr. Luxury Mr. Trickery. That was a nickname for Elias Figueroa. And Figueroa preferred to move to Internacional de Porto Alegre. And in Brazil, the Brazilian league was huge. This was the squad, the backbone, the vertebrae of the World Cup winning side of the FIFA 1970 World Cup in Mexico. It was led by, I mean, let's not even go. You know, let's not even go down that path. Gerson, Gerzinho, Tostao, you know, Carlos Alberto, Junior, Zico, Rivelino, you know, Rivelino, Pelé. Extraordinary talent. Extraordinary talent. In the 70s. And Europe was not the same. And so, the move to Internacional de Alegre was exciting, you know. For the Southern Club. And it was. As time turned out to prove and show. That the Rio Grande do Sul Club. Was the right decision. For the Chilean. Elias Figueroa. Was also admittedly. Offered Brazilian citizenship. And also offered to play for the Brazilian national team. So much was Elias Figueroa's patriotism and national pride that with his big heart, he said, thank you, but no thanks. He never took up the offer of a blank check to represent Brazil. Instead, he preferred to always represent the Chilean national team. That is Elias Figueroa. In Porto Alegre, he will always be remembered as a legend. Outside of the Beira Rio Stadium, there is a statue of Tostao and Elias Figueroa. It is immense. Immense what you see in Porto Alegre. He will always be remembered in the 1975 Brasileirao, the 1975 and 1976 season titles, when against Cruzeiro, Elias Figueroa met... A corner kick with his markers, jumped up in the air, headed the ball for the winning goal. And right at the moment, and this was on the 15th of December, when 
a ray of light, a, a ray of sunshine, hit his head, would light his head, better said, right just in the moment when he connected with the ball. And that header is called O Gol Illuminado, the enlightened goal. Many would say there is a spiritual meaning to it. There is something supernatural behind that goal because of the shadow, the sunlight, the rays. It was meant to be, wasn't it? That was the birth of the legend. Not only of the Gol, gol Illuminado, but also for locals, the god of Beira Rio. Figueroa had so much fan mail so much adulation, so much affection in Porto Alegre as a player that now, all these years retired, his doors are always open to return to Brazil. And Figueroa preferred to return home to his beloved Chile. These days, Elias Figueroa still re resides in his hometown. He lives in Viña del Mar, in a section, in a comuna called, in the city of Concon, neighboring Viña del Mar. And Elias Figueroa is also remembered in his native country for returning from Internacional de Porto Alegre to lift the Chilean League title in 1977. None other but with... Club Deportivo Palestino. This is Palestino, obviously, world famous for being the club that represents the Middle East and the Arab world. It is the most beloved and represented football club outside of the Middle East. And for Palestino, Figueroa lifted the title in 1977 under the you know instructions of manager Fernando. Riera, and also they lifted the cup title, the Copa Chile, the 1977 Copa Chile against Unión Española. Figueroa further cemented not only the 66 World Cup appearance in England, but also the 1974 FIFA World Cup in West Germany. That was an amazing feat and very and a very humble gesture to return back to his his native country. And then finally in 1978, Caupolicán Peña took over for Palestino and they conquered the 1978 league championship, defeating the always powerful Colo Colo, where Don Elias would score a goal in the final. In 1978, once again, Figueroa was considered the best football player in the Chilean league before before winning this title playing in Uruguay and Brazil and the following year 1979 Elias Figueroa was also captain of the Chilean national team and also reached the semi-finals of the Copa Libertadores in that year with Palestino. An amazing feat for a club with such a small budget. His final stage in club football was in the United States. Figueroa played alongside Franz Beckenbauer, considered as his counterpart in Europe, and with Johan Cruyff, the legendary Dutchman. And um, Cruyff Figueroa, Teófilo Cubillas of Peru, Gerd Müller of West Germany, many of these great names, Giorgio Quinalia, and also, you know, many others decided to move to the North American Soccer League in the United States. And uh, Fort Lauderdale Strikers was his club. Figueroa enjoyed a lot of his football, especially playing against the New York Cosmos. But for Figueroa, his ultimate dream was to play another World Cup, one final one in Spain in 1982 and remember the World Cup campaign for 1982 was impressive because Chile qualified to a World Cup undefeated undefeated so Elias Figueroa decided 
um, to also play, you know, in a in a friendly tournament, club tournament for Colo Colo, and against Universidad de Chile, La U, just after the Spain, uh, the the abysmal performance, exiting in the group stage in 1982 in Spain, Colo Colo defeated Universidad de Chile on the 1st of January, you know, on New Year's Day in 1983. And that was the day Elias Figueroa announced his retirement from professional football after an, a stellar 18-year career. Sports Illustrated, the prestigious sports magazine, has considered Elias Figueroa in the top 50 sportsmen of all time. That is who Elias Figueroa is. He's also got the the prestige of winning three three honourable titles. Not even Pelé, not even Diego Maradona have won three consecutive South American Player of the Year awards. That is by the prestigious El País newspaper. Figueroa has won three of these awards in a row. Simply outstanding. Simply outstanding. So, if I go through the list of awards, we would go through another five five minutes just recounting his glorious career. Simply sensational. And and many think, and in the English-speaking world, why Elias Figueroa? Was is not regarded as one of the best defenders in the world. We always see these FIFA, you know, um, team of the century, and it's not to disregard Daniel Passarella or Franz Beckenbauer or Franco Baresi or Paolo Maldini. It's simply because Chile does not have the same weight as a country like Argentina, Brazil, Germany, or Italy. Elias Figueroa had nothing to envy any of these greats. Elias Figueroa. Elias Figueroa, as they would say in Portuguese, was simply a true star. A true star. 1974, 1975 and 1976. Three consecutive years for the best player in South America. Simply outstanding. Simply outstanding. Another gesture that is so distinctive in Chilean society is that thankfully the man has been recognized in life and the government and the regional government decided to rename the stadium of Playancha located in Valparaiso home of Santiago Wanderers in 2012 to his name the stadium is now called the Estadio Elias Figueroa Brander a very fitting and significant um, gesture to name Elias Figueroa and the stadium to his name. Now Figueroa had a has a very 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 strong friendship with Pelé and with all the greats of Brazilian football. Maradona said that Figueroa was very difficult to to beat in defense. A huge name in world football. A huge name, not only in South American football, but in world football. So two club titles in Uruguay with Peñarol. And also in the Gaúcho State Championship in Brazil. Five tournaments with five cup titles with Internacional. Two Brazilian Brasileirao Championships in 75 and 76. Plus one, so six Gaúcho State titles. Two national Brazilian titles, one Chilean league title, and one Chilean cup title. Simply, simply outstanding. That is Elias Figueroa. For all of you here on Chilean Football News, thank you for your time. And it's a great little series. It's bye for now.